Now what we want to do is import this waveform into a classic random test. And typically what you do when defining a random test is you import your file, and that's what we have right here. Turns out that our cylinder that we're interested in is on channel 2, column 2, so we input to column 2, and we do an average import method. We set the number of lines to 1600, so we have plenty of resolution. And when we scan the file, we see that we get a profile that looks like this. 13.13 G's RMS. It is uh, 15 seconds long. The kurtosis happens to be 8.5, uh, a high of 126 G positive and negative 120 G's. So that is what it looks like. Now the problem is the file that we took in was an engine run-up. That means it's non-stationary. The frequencies are shifting around. Very difficult to define a random test when things are moving around using an average technique because the frames that are brought together are simply averaged together and the resulting spectrum is an average of all the frames of the entire file. So what we would like to do is analyze it from a fatigue method and when we do that we get a little different result. And it's interesting to note the green is the average method, our table as defined at 13.13 G's RMS. When we use the fatigue damage method, this actually looks at each snippet of waveform and calculate how much damage or fatigue would be done with that waveform into a resonant object. The uh, slope of the SN curve in this case is 8 and the resonance is assumed to be 50 and we come up with a damage number. The damage which we would need, the spectrum which we would need to create that damage is shown in this blue line and notice that it's higher at 16.24 G's. So uh, 15 seconds of data uh, equivalently uh, has a higher G RMS level. Where is the additional G RMS coming from? Primarily in areas like this. Now the averaging has averaged those transition sweeps out with the sine wave going rapidly up, but the damage recognizes that significant damage is done there, so it fills these gaps in and actually makes the uh, resonant points a smidgen higher in many cases. So you can see that if you use a damage method, you'll get a more accurate random equivalent. The random waveform which is run will give you the same amount of damage as that particular waveform gave you originally, which was of course not random, but a well, basically sign on random with sweeping sign tones, i.e. engine run up. The recorded file was 15 seconds long. In our case, uh, the target life, we want to be 600 hours, and if we ran a 600 hour test, that would of course be equivalent. Now there's a couple clever things we can do. We don't want to run 600 hours, we want to run less than that. So we can put in this field here how long of a test duration we want, and let's make it 30 hours. And notice that our scanned G is going to go from 16 G's to a higher number, 23 G's. So we can run a random test at 23 G's over this spectrum range and get the equivalent amount of damage that we would get in 600 hours with that engine run up in just 30 hours. Now that is running with traditional random, i.e. kurtosis equals 3, Gaussian distribution. Our waveform actually had a kurtosis of 8.5. So what would happen if we ran with the kurtosis increase? what's going to happen is our GRMS is going to be reduced. In fact, it goes from 23 to 14, and our kurtosis would then be at 8.48, or about 8.5. And of course, the peaks are going to be significantly higher. That damage would be also equivalent uh, to the original waveform run at 600 hours now, run in just 30 hours. So that is an accurate way of portraying damage in a non-stationary waveform and coming up with a random test with or without kurtosis or kurtosian as vibration research calls it to run your test and get a true view of the